All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right in these times that ran. Now, today I want to discuss about confessions, you know, confessing to Christ. You know, it's very important that we pour our hearts to God. It's always important that we don't suppress our emotions and our feelings and our thoughts. It's always important and healthy for us to air things out, get things off of our chest. There's a lot of thoughts that go through our minds. There's a lot of things that's in our heart and our soul that we need to confess and, you know, come clean with and acknowledge, you know. It's very important to hold ourselves accountable and own up to everything that's going on with us in our personal lives and uh, situations dealing with other people as well. It's never good to just hold in a bunch of secrets and just keep things all to yourself because that's how you end up imploding and you end up overreacting or taking your anger out in the wrong fashion to another person that didn't deserve it. So we have to really redirect our energies properly and learn how to keep things accordingly. You know, we have to really learn how to go about things without losing self-control, you know, because our sanity is everything. Our mental health is everything. Our spiritual health is everything. And the confession really is good for our mental health. It's good for our heart. It's good for our soul. It's good for our whole temple. You know, Christ wants us to confess, of course, that he's the son of God and our savior. And he also wants us to confess to others, you know. We should confess to other brothers in Christ. We should also confess to other sisters in Christ, you know. We can't just walk around not knowing what's going on with each other or what's really bothering each other deep down inside. You know, we shouldn't be nosy, but we should be concerned or worried or we should be um, wanting to know what's good with someone's well-being. So confessing opens up doors for that. Confessing gives each other clarity. It gives each other outlets to see what's really going on with each other, you know, good counseling, and how y'all can go from the next stage. If you feel a certain way, you can find someone to confess to about it, and you'll be surprised the type of advice they can give you, how much your life can be much better, and how much they can come for you in your tough situations. So what I want to do is read some scriptures that concern about confessing, and just go from there. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 11. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's see. The book of First Timothy chapter 6 verse 13. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who testified the good confession before Pantheus the Pilate. The book of Psalm, chapter 38, verse 18. For I confess my iniquity. I am full of anxiety because of my sin. The book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips and give thanks to his name. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 3. While they stood in their place, they read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a fourth of the day, and for another fourth they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. The book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 11. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. The book of Job, chapter 40, verse 14. Then I will also confess to you that your own right hand can save you. The book of Psalm, chapter 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. The book of Romans 10, verse 10. For with the heart of a person believes result in their righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses result in his salvation. The book of 1 John 4, verse 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. 
Book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 8. And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Men, will confess him also before the angels of God. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 32. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will confess him before my Father who is in heaven. So as you can see there, it's very important that we confess our sins towards one another. It's important that we also confess that Christ is the Son of God. You know, so there's different ways of confession and confessing things. So it's important that we always pour our heart out to the Lord and that we always speak on what's really going on with our situations. I pray to God that whoever this is, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the Lord. I pray that things get better for you. I pray that you start confessing and be more open and more transparent with what's going on and that let the Lord open doors for you. I got much love for you. God bless you. Peace.